Hey, it's Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. I'm in New York this week for the Sketch Innovation Lab, but I just thought since I'm putting out videos on neuromarketing, I should do one in Times Square. Uh, this is a crazy environment. There's so much marketing going on that it really makes you wonder, will we be able to use devices like the Emotive headset to measure brain waves and actually use that for marketing purposes in the future? So stay tuned for my video coming up on neuromarketing. Step two, we take them to each experience, we place the EEG headsets on the family and measure their emotions in real time as they explore that environment. Step three, we complete another questionnaire about how they have felt during that experience. From the results, we're able to develop the Singapore Emotion Travel Guide. People have actually gotten into hot water in the past for trying to do this because they try to make these predictions based on science that actually isn't even there. I remember seeing an article from 2008 where researchers were using functional MRI, which takes a look at blood flow changes in the brain, to look at how the amygdala, the fear center of the brain, was activated when people were either watching Obama or McCain in that presidential election. The researchers reached certain conclusions based on amygdala activation patterns, whether people would vote for McCain or Obama. But the problem was is that we had no scientific data or evidence that amygdala activations actually did correspond to who people would vote for. So when they reached their conclusions, they actually got kind of raked over the coals in the press because uh, it was a perfect example how fMRI back in the early days was being uh, misused for certain purposes. So I worry about EEG because, you know, are people sort of overstepping the boundaries about what it's actually capable of uh, giving us in terms of information? But that certainly hasn't stopped people from trying. And I've noticed that Emotive has really been moving in more of a neuromarketing direction. So we're going to take a look at this and take a look at the science behind what brainwaves are actually being picked up and actually what you can predict from them. And I'll tell you that it's some pretty interesting research that's coming out that suggests that machine learning is really allowing us to see nuances in EEG patterns that better predict things like what people actually would be interested in buying. So let's take a look at the definition of neuromarketing from Wikipedia just to get a better idea of what we're talking about. Neuromarketing is a commercial marketing communication field that applies neuropsychology to marketing research studying consumers' sentimotor, cognitive, and affective response to marketing stimuli. So what they're saying is they're taking a look at mood, thoughts, and sensory experiences to predict how people will actually react to marketing stimulus. It uses technologies such as fMRI, EEG, and other physiological states like heart rate, respiratory rate, galvanic skin response, which is the amount that you're sweating, or even facial coding to categorize the physical expression of emotion or eye tracking to identify attention. It says certain companies, particularly those with large scale ambitions to predict consumer behavior, have invested in their own laboratories, science personnel, and partnerships with academia. Now, if you're like a lot of people, you're probably concerned about how this data is actually gonna be used to control our minds, and I have my own concerns as well. You know, Facebook is in hot water right now for giving all of our data away to certain companies to predict things maybe even have influenced the presidential election. I don't know, but you know, this is where people get actually afraid of this technology is that this information is going to be used against us or to sort of force us to buy products. On the other hand, I can see where it could be incredibly beneficial to understand ourselves better and gain more introspection about how our minds and brains work. And I'm sure there'll be a ton of legal and ethical issues as we become more skilled at using this technology. Now when you look at how these things actually work, and I have plenty of videos on that, so check those out if you're curious, we're detecting voltage changes through the scalp and you know, traditionally taking that complex EEG signal, running it through mathematical formulas and breaking it down in individual frequency patterns so that we can see ratios of those frequency patterns. And conceptually that makes sense for things like attention if you're treating ADHD with neurofeedback or uh, tenseness or anxiety if you're using meditation for neurofeedback, but more nuanced things like emotions especially, like is the person happy, sad, excited, or even disgusted, 
how can you actually pick that out of the ratios of the brain waves? And people have been trying to do this for a long time and some things have worked and some things haven't. But like I said, I think that what's happening now is that through machine learning, we're seeing more nuances in the complex EEG signal that a person simply could not recognize in terms of like pattern recognition. So we're seeing these academic papers coming out now that are being much more nuanced than what they're being able to pull out of the EEG data. So we're going to take a look at a couple of these studies and after we're done, you sit there and tell me that we're not making some progress. So the first journal article that we're taking a look at in our investigation of whether emotions can be detected by EEG or not for neuromarketing is this paper. It comes to us from 2015 in a journal called Neurocomputing. And I didn't even realize that you could pick up certain emotions with EEG signals and that they've been pretty well characterized. This is for disgust. So the emotion of disgust, of actually seeing something that disgusts you, produces this EEG signal. And they actually have it quite well characterized. In this paper, they say that the right hemisphere of the brain and the gamma, gamma wave frequency bands are particularly sensitive when experiencing these negative emotions such as disgust. I also liked how they talked about disgust as such a powerful ancestral and primal response that helped us with our evolution that um, the EEG signal is really strong. People can actually elicit this from just remembering things that disgust them, let alone actually seeing something that produces that response. So for the experiment, they had 28 healthy subjects. They sat them down in a chair in a room and they showed them uh, a sequence of symbols. It was either a plus sign or a downwards arrow. And they were instructed that when they were shown the downwards arrow, that they should remember an unpleasant odor. And that would, you know, in theory, elicit the EEG signal of disgust. And uh, they would show each symbol for a couple of seconds each. You can see their trial paradigm right here. You can see what leads that they used. So they used a pretty interesting system for the EEG. It was the NOBio cap. Um, they used eight leads. It's actually a dry electrode sensor cap, which is pretty neat. Um, and that's how they got their data. And you know, with the analysis, they were able to parse out about a 90% success rate in identifying negative um, emotion of disgust. And they got all their visual EEG signal here showing in the red where it was more likely that they detected this gamma wave burst of disgust in people that were uh, experiencing this emotion. And um, you know, I, the emotive headset would, in my opinion, be able to pick up that uh, voltage change too. So, you know, this is adding to our understanding of how someone could actually use the emotive headset for neuromarketing purposes. Um, taking a look at the literature and seeing if people have actually been able to characterize these things and uh, giving a little bit more credit to the company that is developing these algorithms to um, use them for neuromarketing. And for fear of the video going too long here, I won't belabor the point too much more. I just wanted to take a look at this paper also from 2015 about self-induced emotion. So it was interesting. They were talking about a self-induced emotion like disgust would be about 15% of the signal as if you were actually experiencing the emotion. And the other interesting part about this paper is they talked about previous work had focused mostly on the area of T8 in the right hemisphere. And they were saying that for more nuanced and efficient detection of emotions, you would need to process data from the whole brain. So they presented their background of mathematical analyses to actually make that happen. And that was pretty interesting to look at. Um, one pertinent thing to personal EEG devices is that they were talking about a lot of the signal range was found in the higher frequency gamma waves and that their sampling rate was 500 hertz to detect that. Now, I looked at the sampling rate for Emotive Insight, which was 2048 hertz a channel, but then it got heavily filtered down to 128 hertz. So, you know, theoretically, they could still detect the gamma wave bursts that would uh, indicate the change in emotion. Um, but it did get heavily filtered down. And I did take a look at Muse, and the Muse headband has a sampling rate of either 220 hertz or 500 hertz. So again, they would be able to detect those gamma wave bursts as well. So that's good news because when I look at the Emotive app, they actually heavily base it off of detecting emotion. So conceptually, it makes sense to me. Uh, here's the research showing that there are EEG changes with emotions, and they're sampling at a higher enough frequency rate to detect that. So it makes me more comfortable in, in looking further into neuromarketing and you know not feeling like I was fooled into some kind of hoax. 
The last study that I wanted to take a look at was done in 2013 in Edinburgh in Scotland, and they were talking about the urban brain. So they had someone with the emotive epoch walk around with a computer in their backpack and detect the emotional changes. There was three zones. There was an urban zone followed by a nice nature zone followed by another urban zone. And what they were doing was taking a look at the proprietary epoch information and graphing out emotional levels between excitement and frustration and showing that there was similarities between 12 different people that did the walk. Now the study would obviously be stronger if they were able to show raw EEG changes compared to the proprietary output information from the emotive impact, but it's still interesting to take a look at and I'd like to see some follow-up papers. So if anybody knows of papers that are more recent that takes a look at this topic, let me know and it would be really interesting to look at.